The Truth About Vaccines is a riveting new docu-series that exposes the truth behind vaccines. Do vaccinations confer immunity? Are there natural options to vaccinations? What questions should you ask before you vaccinate? Were vaccines responsible for the decline in polio, smallpox, and pertussis? What about the flu shot and the HPV vaccine? Are they safe? Why do outbreaks occur mostly in vaccinated populations? There's so many questions around vaccines and we need to expose the truth. That's why I'm inviting you to watch the docu-series and you can attend for free. Go to learntruehealth.com slash vaccines. That's learntruehealth.com slash vaccines to enroll to watch the free screening of the revolutionary docu-series, The Truth About Vaccines. There's over 60 scientists and expert doctors in boosting the immune system and in understanding vaccines and how they work. They're here to teach us for free what we can do naturally to boost the immune system and fully understand the impact that vaccines have on our lives, on our bodies, and on our children. We need to expose this information for the sake of ourselves and our future. Go to learntruehealth.com slash vaccines and sign up now so that you can get free access because knowledge is power. Watching this will help you and empower you and your family to make the best choices you can for your future. Learntruehealth.com slash vaccines. Welcome to the Learn True Health podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 161. I am so inspired by today's guest, Dr. Igor Smirnov has created the most amazing discoveries in science that helps us to to change our health on the cellular level. Uh, This is absolutely phenomenal what you have discovered and your years of research. I'm so thrilled to have you here. I I first heard about your work through The Truth About Cancer uh, when you were interviewed by Ty Bollinger and uh, it blew me away the things that you have uncovered and I'd love for you to start our interview by sharing with us your story because your background is absolutely fascinating and I know my listeners would love to hear um, not only your personal story but what you have uncovered. Uh, Thank you very much. Um, uh, Yes, Uh, the beginning of the story is uh, probably it's uh, in the 1980s uh, uh, when it happened the Chernobyl fallout uh, with nuclear power plant in the former Soviet Union. And um, as a result of this uh, uh, disaster, there was a number, huge number of people suffering from uh, radiation disease. And the group of these people were placed in different uh, resorts uh, just to help them to go through rehabilitation. And uh, just by accident, their medical doctors, they noticed that one specific place the group of the patients suffering from radiation disease, they, get, they got very good results with uh, rehabilitation of these patients. And as a result of this um, um, uh, discovery, they found that the basic uh, product, uh, it was, they were consuming the same medicine, same type of uh, you know, product, food, everything, except for the water, because uh, they consumed on a regular basis as natural spring water. So after this discovery, these samples of water were sent to different universities. And uh, we got sample of this water, and we did study in our lab in St. Petersburg University. And actually, we, uh, initially, we believed that it's probably some kind of like exotic minerals or exotic uh, uh, compounds, uh, uh, in this water, but uh, after doing uh, certain research for several months, we actually found there is nothing, uh, there is no special special chemicals or special compounds in this water. And then it came to my mind that probably it's uh, not the chemistry of the water, but the physics of water. Um, so we did uh, several experiments with this water. We run different testing like nuclear magnetic uh, 
resonant test, um, laser spectroscopy, and we actually found that this water uh, had a very specific molecular structure. In other words, it was uh, completely different from regular water just because of the specific molecular orientation in this water. And as a result of this specific molecular structure, water had a profound effect on human physiology and helped people suffering from serious problems like radiation disease. That is amazing. It's amazing to, to think that the, the way our water is structured can play a role in our health. <laughs> And that's right. It, it's fascinating. So, so once once that was discovered, I mean, can what what other health benefits are um, related to to this um, particular type of structured water that that occurs in in nature, but in in these rare places? Um, besides helping them to to avoid cancer and and eliminate their their symptoms of um, radiation poisoning. Uh, well, uh, the, uh, this type of water, actually, spring, natural spring water, is very important for human physiology, as I mentioned before. Why? Because the structure of this water has so-called linear structure. It's, um, you know, if we put it in scientific terminology, it's a polarized oriented multilevel structure. Uh, this type of structure was discovered in the uh, you know, second part of 20th century, and uh, it was actually found uh, uh, this type of structure is actually resembled the structure of intracellular water in the human cells, in living cells. So it means that uh, this water uh, has a profound effect on the biochemistry in the body because it's already ready for, it's bioavailable. It's ready for consumption, for simulation by the cells. And uh, this specific structure is very important as, uh, as I mentioned before. So uh, it took me probably another couple years just to understand this concept that the molecular structure of water, a single uh, linear structure of water is very important because it matches the structure of intracellular water in the human body. Uh, then it took me several years uh, to develop uh, technology which can actually help to replicate this type of water in laboratory environment. And um, I named this technology Molecular Resonance Effect Technology, um, abbreviation MRAT technology. So based on this technology, uh, later on, uh, I managed to develop a different type of products, like, for example, um, MRT activation device, which helps to activate uh, water and water-based product, um, MRT shield product, which help to eliminate the negative effect of electromagnetic radiation on human body, and the uh, wave rider technology, which is based on the same molecular resonance technology. Again, it's another device which can be used for protection of human body against electromagnetic radiation. So what you have is you, you figured out, it took you years in, in the lab with your team to figure out how to recreate that special structure of water that would occur naturally in, in some spring. Does it occur in all spring water or only in, in certain spring waters? Uh, yeah, it's only some rare places uh, uh, in certain... It's not like every uh, natural water can produce same effect. It's a very specific places like, you know, in high mountains, um, like there is a very famous... Uh, uh, water spring waters in Caucasian mountains in uh, in Russia. Uh, in, there is uh, uh, some type of this uh, natural water in Himalayan mountains. So it's ba it's mainly in high mountains area where the water has a very specific unique structure, and this is because of the specific earth magnetic. Um, intensity in this uh, high mountains area because the water is treated with the 
Earth's magnetic field and high pressure because it goes it, because it's sitting in the table under the ground. So both of these uh, treatments, like high pressure and Earth's magnetic field, they have a unique effect on molecular structure in this area. Now, when researching this and seeing, for example, with uh, that one group of the Chernobyl patients, how they experienced their health benefits, um, when you found other areas in the world that had this same structure water, did you also see that the population that was drinking this water had lower disease? Uh, yes, as a matter of fact, uh, it's well known, for example, that the um, uh, the people who live in high mountains, like like I mentioned, Caucasian mountains in uh, Russia or in uh, Tibet or Himalayan area, yes, um, most of these people, they uh, consume this water on a regular basis. They live longer, and uh, they are less exposed to any infectious disease. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's uh, you know uh, really proven fact that these uh, people who live in this area, they definitely uh, have positive effect from uh, consuming the natural spring water. Right. I'm thinking about the blue zones. There's a there's a, a handful of blue zones around the world where people regularly can live in well into their 90s and. Uh, and be physically active, um, like the Hunzas in Peru, I believe, uh, the Georgians, and uh, the the Okinawans. Which that Okinawa is not on a mountain top, but um, these the, then there are those in the Him Himalayan mountains. So there are several blue zones around the world where people are, it's recorded that they live longer and have far less disease statistically. And so most of those uh, blue zones are in those areas where, like you described, um, would have that structured water. So yeah, just, to, exactly right. just yeah. to wrap my brain around it and help the listener understand, um, what other things uh, are affected? Uh, what other um, diseases have you seen the body be able to reverse when drinking this special water? Or what kind of positive effects do you see take place when, when we drink this specific type of water? Uh, well, after um, I managed to develop this uh, technology and recreate this water in the uh, lab environment, Obviously, we conducted a number of uh, tests, uh, like uh, physical tests, biological tests, just to understand how this water can affect your human body physiology. So uh, let me uh, begin with the physics of water, because just to understand why it has so profound effect on the physiology, we have to understand the physics of water. So we conducted a number of tests in uh, at different universities uh, regarding the effect of this MRT treatment, MRT water. Um, uh, for example, it has profound effect on the uh, water conductivity, electrical conductivity, uh, dielectrical uh, permittivity, uh, which is very important. Uh, and uh, also it has profound effect on viscosity of water. So what we found actually when we conducted tests for, regarding the viscosity of regular water and water after the MRT treatment, it's actually indicated that uh, after MRT treatment, uh, the viscosity of water drops almost 300 times, which means that it makes water like a super liquid. And obviously, this type of water is very beneficial for the um, human body because it can penetrate any, you know, vessels, any blood vessels, any, um, you know, cellular membrane. And um, uh, because of this, uh, you know, specific uh, electrodynamic characteristic of water and viscosity of water, it obviously has profound positive physiological effect. And uh, as I mentioned, we conducted a number of tests in uh, vitro and in vivo. And, uh, for example, we conducted tests regarding the effect of this water on different harmful bacteria, like Listeria, like uh, E. coli. And we found this water actually suppress 
uh, harmful bacteria grows in the MRT uh, water. And there, another test we conducted with um, the, regarding the effect of uh, MRT uh, water on Staphylococcus, which is a very serious problem, even in the United States, in the hospitals, there is um, a lot of cases when people are suffering from this infection. Uh, so we found also that this, uh, after MRT treatment, water can actually suppress uh, uh, growth of uh, Staphylococcus. In the human body? So it, uh, it, it was done in vivo in mice model, and it was done in vitro. So both way, vivo and vitro, we, we, we got positive result. Uh, for example, in mice model, uh, the test was conducted uh, um, on different group of mice. They were inoculated with staphylococcus infection. And obviously, after nine days, um, almost 30% of the mice in control group, they were actually... Uh, dead, uh, whereas uh, the mice which were actually uh, uh, on MRT water, there was, one, there was uh, um, only 9% of death. So 32% and 9%, significant difference. Wow. So uh, by, besides, by... Uh, yeah, besides, uh, after inoculation, after almost, you know, three, four hours, most of the animals, they developed a rush, skin, uh, you know, skin rush, uh, because it's a normal, you know, reaction of the body to staphylococcus. Uh, mice on MRT water, no any sign of any rush on the skin. So no inflammation. That is fascinating. So the mice that were infected that also drank the, the MRET water, uh, did not show uh, that that they had signs of like a rash or inflammation while their body yeah. was fighting the infection. Um, that's ph phenomenal, and you have to you have to drink it. Like you don't if you had a a rash just, or, or if you no, had you a drink, you, you yeah, wouldn't you spray to, it on or bathe in it. Like you would drink it. Uh, well, um, you know uh, you can use this uh, you know spray method as well. But uh, basically, you know, um, we use just uh, regular consumption. I mean, when we tested, you know, this in uh, mice model. Now, um, in terms of cancer, because that is the biggest, I mean, just the absolute biggest uh, mind-blowing breakthrough to see um, the, the effects of structured water. Uh, what kind of studies have you been able to uh, do around cancer and, and this structured water? Um, again, as I said, we conducted uh, both tests in vivo and in vitro uh, regarding the effect of uh, MRT structured water on different form of cancer. Uh, for example, in vivo, we again we conducted this in uh, mice uh, model, and the uh, uh, test was uh, conducted in the, in the center of uh, oncology, um, and uh, we actually found that. Uh, consumption of MRT water significantly reduce growth of the cancer cells and growth of the tumors in the mice. And also the lifespan for the mice on MRT water was like 60% uh, uh, higher compared with the uh, mice uh, uh, which were treated with regular water. Uh, so the death rate was also a significant difference in death rate. Uh, this regarding the because we actually tested two different uh, uh, form of cancer with these mice. It's a sarcoma and um, early carcinoma. Uh, and in uh, in uh, vitro on different form of cancer cells, uh, we conducted and repeat this test many times. Um, uh, we actually conducted tests on healthy cancer cells, which uh, are used in you know, almost every lab in the world, they use this test when they, you know, try to prove or disprove effect of the drugs on the cancer cells. Uh, we conducted this test at Althea DX Biotech Corporation in San Diego. 
and uh, we got a very positive result. The effect of MRIG was very significant. Uh, it's almost a 50% difference. Uh, it means that the uh, uh, cancer growth uh, was suppressed almost 50% compared with the control group. That's amazing. And this is just regular water, pure water, no chemicals, not, nothing was added in this water, just because of the specific molecular structure of the water, the near molecular structure of the water. Why, why is it that, that the, depending on the structure, it affects the body differently? Like, is it because it can hydrate the cell more or it um, affects us on an energetic level? Like, wh why is it that this works so well? Uh, yeah, it it works both ways, but obviously MRT water, because I mentioned it has a very low viscosity, um, uh, this type of water obviously has a super liquid effect in the body, so it's actually hydrate body. Uh, we conducted so-called bioimpedance tests there several times in different locations, in different places, different countries, regarding the effect of MRT water on uh, human uh, uh, intracell, extracell water exchange. So basically, the con you know we confirmed that uh, MRT water can be um, absorbed by the human uh, cells, human body, three times faster compared with regular water, which is a very significant result. And uh, another level is obviously uh, you know it's energy of water because uh, different molecular structure. Uh, it, it, you know, it just imprint a different energy pattern in the water. And, for example, uh, uh, probably you know very well, you heard about Masari Motor uh, Research in Japan. Yes, absolutely. The, the scientist who would freeze water and, and, uh, and would show that there's a different structure of water depending on what kind of prayers that the monks were uh, putting on the water. So love would actually turn into this beautiful structure and hate would turn into this very ugly structure. And it's very, very fascinating. That's right. And uh, um, actually, I knew Masari Moto very well, and uh, I was a couple times in Japan in his lab. And he conducted tests for uh, our MRT technology, MRT water. So um, what he found that after MRT treatment, regular water, it's actually create a beautiful uh, geometry um, after it, the water was uh, frozen. And then after the, you know, this um, uh, um, observation under the microscope, he actually found out that after MRT treatment, even the water affected by the electromagnetic radiation or affected by some negative energy, it can actually restore normal water molecular structure. It creates a beautiful uh, geometry um, of the uh, water molecular structure. And uh, actually, Masari Modern named it an angel water. Wow. Um, it happened because, um, as I said, the, uh, his test proved that after MRT treatment, uh, water can be um, uh, restored back to normal um, uh, structure, normal energy. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, through our partners in uh, Thailand, uh, we supplied a huge number of uh, bottles of emirati water to people uh, to Fukushima in Japan after this, uh, again, after the nuclear plant uh, fallout in, in Fukushima. And it helped a lot of people. And this is how I, I was introduced to Masari Motor, because he was one of the, you know, um, um, enthusiasts and activists uh, who was trying to help people in Fukushima. And when he actually um, uh, he was introduced to MRT technology, he was so fascinating because it uh, really helped a lot of people suffering from radiation disease in Fukushima. I'm I'm surprised that this should be given to every single cancer patient, especially those who are undergoing radiation treatment. 
uh, just the amount of people that are suffering needlessly from nausea and all the symptoms that they go through when they go through radiation treatment um, and the exhaustion that they that they have because of the radiation treatment. I mean, that that alone, um, it should be a reason why your water should be available to those patients, uh, even regardless of all the other wonderful benefits. Um, that's, that is absolutely fascinating. So did you personally get to go to Japan, um, and see, meet some of the people who had been affected by Fukushima and, and received your water? Um, or did you hear about their positive results, um, when, after you delivered that water to them? Uh, yes, actually, uh, they sent me some, you know, uh, testing results, uh, uh, from uh, Masari Moto uh, company, from Masari Moto laboratory. After this, you know, um, when they supplied water to uh, a patient from Fukushima, and there was a couple of uh, medical doctors, uh, for example, Doctor Nimoto, and um, and uh, he's a biologist, and actually they conducted a number of tests uh, for MRT water, and they found actually positive results for. Uh, people suffering in Fukushima. This is how I knew about this result. And um, uh, uh, regarding the um, um, uh, chemotherapy treatment and the uh, consumption of MRT water, we, we have a number of anecdotal cases uh, with patients. They were undergoing chemotherapy, uh, in, you know, in different locations, like in, uh, for example, in Singapore, Malaysia, in the uh, United States. Uh, and uh, really, yeah, they they got a very positive result after they uh, began to consume MRT water. Uh, most of them reported that they uh, got less um, a negative result of uh, uh, chemotherapy. We, I mean, everybody knows that there is. Uh, so, you know, there is a lot of negative, there is a negative effect of chemotherapy. Chemotherapy kills cancer cells, but at the same time, it kills normal cells, and this is the main problem. So, and uh, it's uh, consumption of MRT water helped this patient to avoid uh, these, you know, side effects of uh, chemotherapy. Uh, for example, most of them um, uh, stop. Um, to have the headaches, you know, nausea, and, uh, you know, in some cases even uh, the effect of hallucination was stopped after they began to cons uh, consume um, MRT water. And in several anecdotal cases which we uh, conducted, uh, for example, here in Los Angeles, um, uh, one of the patients, he was... Uh, um, I mean, he was undergoing chemotherapy because of the lung cancer, uh, and he was the patient for almost three years uh, with um, Cedar Sinai Medical Hospital. And uh, when he began to consume MRT water, he actually collected all the blood tests before and after, and it's very easy to compare the very interesting result. You know, that... Um, during the chemotherapy, as I mentioned, the main side effect is uh, that chemotherapy actually kills the immune system. Your white blood cells within the first three, four days goes almost to zero. Right, okay. Now, it takes about three to four weeks on a regular basis to rebound these white blood cells to normal. Uh, when same patient began to use emirate water, the rebounding was only three, four days. Oh, my gosh. So, obviously, you know, uh, there was elimination of significant side effects. So, yeah, this uh, water, just because of its unique, um, electric, as I said, electrodynamic characteristic and uh, viscosity, uh, as I said, it's a very good delivery instrument. We're not position this water as a medicine, whatever. It's just a delivery instrument because through improvement of hydration, body hydration, it actually eliminates a lot of negative side effects of, you know, either it's a, 
uh, chemicals, if it's radiation, or anything else. Right. Well, I mean, we're, we're made up mostly of water, right? And so, of course, we want to stay as hydrated as possible. If you think about um, it lubricates our joints. And so those who are dehydrated often have uh, creaky joints and joint pain and don't realize it. Um, same as you'd want to put, you want to make sure your car is filled up with oil so it's well lubricated. You want to make sure your body is well lubricated. And that's how our body eliminates toxins is through right. the, yep. through the water system of the body, right? So the body delivers nutrients to the cell using, using our fluid and removes toxins using our fluid. So if we're dehydrated, our body can't bring nutrition to the cell, oxygenate the cell, and it can't take away and eliminate the toxins toxins. Um, also, water is needed to produce energy, ATP, uh, which is the, the cellular energy. Uh, it's needed right. to, to break down many toxins, so many enzymatic processes of the body. It's so, so important. To, and, and it's that wonderful cushion that bathes our brain. <laughs> and so we've got all these different fluids in our body, which are so important, right. just like we want to top up the fluids in our car. You know, over and over again, I think of how many times we will uh, take better care of our vehicle than we will of our own body, make sure our vehicle's topped up with all its fluids, but then we'll go drink a Coke <laughs> and we won't, we won't drink water. And now there's a, a choice when it comes to the quality of water. I mean, I just thought water was water and now we're finding out that we could drink subpar water or excellent molecularly structured water that, that um, has um, better health benefits than just regular water. Speaking of regular water, so if, if one type of water, your structured water, could benefit the body so much, are there structures like um, the scientists in Japan discovered that there's many different structures when you can um, influence the structure of water based on thought and um, emotion and, and um, energy and pollution? Uh, are there structures that are negatively impacting us? So so not, not on a... Um, not like a chemical level, like if there was um, chemicals. We'll get into that uh, soon enough. But if there's municipal water, like city water or bottled water um, that has a negative structure, can that negatively impact us? Or are we pretty much looking at water as either benign and not and just kind of water or it's super beneficial when it is in the MRET um, state? Um, yeah, uh, well, you know, the, it's a good question. Um, uh, obviously, you know, water is so sensitive to any uh, physical effect, not just electromagnetic radiation, but anything, um, any effect, you know, uh, can actually uh, change molecular structure of water. It's very sensitive. And, uh, uh, for example, like, um, you know, we know very well that most of the water, bottle, you know, bottled water we consume on a regular basis it's a, just a reverse osmosis process. They use reverse osmosis, you know, to get the, pu they just purify water. So they mechanically purify water. Obviously, it's clean water. But the point is, there is no proper molecular strike because they actually, through this reverse osmosis, they actually destroying the proper molecular, natural molecular structure of water. Right, because it's not, and it's not it's normal out. to have, it's not yeah, a part of nature. Yeah, this water has no positive energy effect on the body. I mean, it's pure, it's good water, pure water, but it, what, this water cannot produce profound, significant, natural physiological effect. And uh, obviously, any water, any like water container which is located very close to, um, like, uh, high voltage power lines or some, you know, strong electromagnetic source of strong electromagnetic field, this type of water obviously is ruined. And the molecular structure of this water is ruined. And it has a negative effect, negative uh, um, imprint. And it was basically, uh, you know, discovered and proved by um, uh, Masaru Emoto research. Now, there's other devices, like home devices, like a, a Kungin water I've heard of. I've, I've drank, my friend is a Kungin machine, and there, there's other types of, um, of filters. What is your um, 
experience with those? Is it, uh, do they also create a negative structures or do they help to create positive structures for the water? Um, I'm not pretty sure because, uh, you know, when you uh, try to use some technology, you have to uh, just to check the what is the uh, research scientific background behind this technology. Um, in most cases, it's very difficult to get any, uh, uh, you know, published uh, scientific result uh, for the, you know, water research. And um, um, as I said, you know, uh, with uh, a different type of water, with different technology, you have to be very careful because, for example, like uh, there, it's very popular alkaline water, especially you know in uh, Asia, it's very popular because it was actually developed by uh, you know most of the Korean and Japanese company. They uh, began to produce this type of devices for for production of uh, alkaline water. Um, alkaline water, it may be a good uh, idea to use alkaline water if you have too much acidity in your body, if you're suffering from too much acidity. But on a regular basis, when the body is healthy, um, you know, it's very well known. A every medical doctor knows that uh, your blood is supposed to be slightly alkaline, your urine is supposed to be slightly acidic, and your saliva is supposed to be neutral, 7.0 pH. And uh, based on this idea, there was a developed so-called saliva test, right? So mm -hmm. uh, it means that most of the um, liquids in the human body are supposed to be neutral. It means it has a neutral pH. In order to uh, support the proper pH balance in the body. So if there is any shift of the pH in the body, if it's too alkaline or too acidic, this is the uh, direct um, evidence that you have a, some health problem in your body. So uh, it's interesting that when we did test for MRT water, we actually found that this technology has tendency to balance pH. In other words, the same device can reduce acidity of water if it's too much acidity, or can reduce alkalinity of the water if there is too much alkalinity in the water. And it's very interesting. It's very, I mean... Uh, that is fascinating. Fascinating, because the same device can control pH of the water. And the after treatment of uh, MRT, uh, with MRT device, actually what we do, we actually try to normalize pH of the water. And as a result, when you consume the water with normal pH, it actually can help to normalize water in your body. So it's like it's adaptogenic. Exactly. Wow, that's fascinating. It's, it's, it's more powerful than drinking alkaline water because alkaline water is only going to force you to go more basic, more alkaline. Whereas if your body doesn't need to be more alkaline, then you're the um, sort of the buffers, the systems of the body that are working hard to achieve homeostasis are going to be um, have to use up their resources to bring it back to neutral or closer to acidic. And what you're saying uh, is right. what's healthier is drinking the MRET water because whether you're a little bit alkaline or a little bit um, acidic, whether your body's either way, it helps to pull the body back into balance. Right. That's yeah, that's right. Yeah. Wow. That, that is, that is really fascinating. Now, a lot of municipal water in, um, in many countries have, uh, additives to it. So, you know, sodium fluoride, chlorine, what are your thoughts on these additives and, uh, the effect of, um, how it affects the health of the water, the structure of the water, and also our health? Well, obviously, any uh, if it's too much additive, you know, it obviously can affect the human body uh, physiology uh, in a negative way. Um, and uh, well, as far as I know, in uh, you know some countries, like for example in Europe, uh, the use of chlorine completely, you know, um, cancelled, uh, and they try to use a different type of. Fur technology to purify water. Um, yeah, it's uh, not very good idea to 
put any type of additives in the water. So when someone has a your MRET device to uh, charge their own water, um, they what kind of water should they use? Uh, usually, you know, we recommend uh, it, it should be a clean water, which means it should be drinkable water. So um, if the water is uh, not very pure, obviously you have to use some type of filtration to remove the heavy metals or some additive from the water or even some organic particles from the water. Uh, when the water is clean and pure, then uh, it can be used for MRT treatment. Now, how long uh, does it... Oh, sorry. Go on. Yeah, because MRT treatment, uh, it's not a filtration technology. We, we have nothing to do with filtration. It's activation technology. So it has to be uh, any type of pure water uh, because MRT treatment can activate any type of water, including like, uh, for example, distilled water or mineral water or just regular reverse osmosis water. But it has to go through MRT treatment. That was my next question, actually, was could someone filter any way um, because, you, like you had shared, uh, reverse osmosis, as great as it is for filtering water, damages the structure of the water because that, that's not natural. We don't na see reverse osmosis happening in our, in our drinking water on, on, uh, in, in nature, right? And so uh, your machine can bring it back into the healthiest state um, for us to, right. to drink. Yeah, yeah. Got it. Now, how long does it last? So if I were to do it to a glass of water and just have it be sitting there, um, maybe in the fridge or on my desk, how long does this structure last? Well, actually, um, a number of tests we conducted uh, regarding the effect on MRT water um, on, uh, you know, physical properties of water or some biological tests. It's actually confirmed that um, after MRT treatment, uh, this um, modification of water molecular structure lasts for a very long uh, time, for example, for even several weeks. Uh, for example, we conducted tests uh, regarding the effect of MRT treatment of, on pH of water, and even after 16 days, there was still uh, conducted the effect of MRT, MRT treatment on water pH index. Man, I'm, I have so many questions for you. I'm just really, really fascinated by this. So if someone is dehydrated, like to the point where they're hospitalized, right? So maybe they have sunstroke. Mm -hmm. If they were to drink your water, would their body recover faster than if they were to drink regular water? Of course, I guess if they were in the hospital, they would have an IV. But if someone had was so dehydrated that they it was... Um, almost fatal, like if they didn't get more water, would they, would it hydrate them faster? Would they absorb it faster? Would it get into their cells faster? How, like, you know, it sounds like what you're saying is that the body absorbs this and utilizes it faster than regular water. Uh, yes. And uh, as I said, the bioimpedance testing for MRT water actually proves that it, uh, you know, uh, can be absorbed by the cells three times faster. Three times faster. Got it. So, man, just I'm just thinking as a mom, you know, when you're, uh, I know kids that have run out there and they they play soccer in the the hot sun and they forget to drink and then that night they're they're they have sunstroke, and that can be damaging to the body. It can be very scary for a parent, right. and so just to have this machine on hand, almost like a first aid, like make sure that you can hydrate someone faster, um, would be would be really beneficial. Now. That you describe that it is almost like antimicrobial, um, in that it, in that it's helping the immune system when you did these tests in, in mice uh, to um, improve the ability to fight certain infections. But what if um, does this water, the structure of water, if you were to put an um, a contaminant like a, a bacteria, for example, in the structured water? Uh, does the structure itself um, neg uh, negate the bacteria? Like, what could this be used to replace um, chlorine or, or other other methods of killing bacteria in water? 
Uh, yes, uh, we did this testing uh, in a couple labs uh, in the United States uh, uh, regarding the effect of MRT water on different food products. And uh, actually we found that, yeah, introduction of MRT water significantly reduce the growth of the uh, harmful, uh, uh, you know, harmful bacteria like uh, listeria, um, uh, you know, different coliforms of bacteria. Yeah. Yeah. If we could convince a mu municipality to get this machine um, attached to the, the water system, <laughs> because you said it lasts several weeks, it helps to fight off bacteria. It's it obviously uh, has health benefits for those who drink it. Um, I could see that this would be fantastic on a on, on a large scale for a whole population. It, do you have any um, like where you're going in the future with this? Do you have any desire to try to get this in uh, to cities or or to um, counties? Uh, well, actually, you know, this technology can be easily scaled up. You know, it's, there is no problem for us to develop, uh, you know, equipment which can actually treat. Um, you know, a huge amount of water, um, as I said, I mean, like uh, several thousand gallons of water at a time. Um, it's just a matter of, uh, um, of the, you know, authorities, of the city authorities, just a matter of them to accept this technology. Um, that's uh, basically it, because we are ready to, um, to conduct any test and, as I said, to scale up this technology. Currently, we uh, produce a two liters machine which can treat two liters of water uh, every uh, every half an hour, and it's uh, mostly for the you know for the families, for individuals, obviously, yeah. Right, so you can treat the two liters of water and then put it in the fridge and, and then treat another two liters of water because it lasts for several weeks. Um, you There's no problem in that, in storing it. And uh, so you just exactly. treat yeah. It, yeah. the water that you... Now, uh, is it best to also... So drinking this water is great, but is it best to also cook with this water? Uh, is, is Can it be damaged when you boil it, for example? Or if someone wants to make a soup with it, would it also maintain those health benefits? Uh, yes, uh, we uh, actually conducted tests for the um, MRT water. Um, as I said, we measure a different uh, modification of the physical property of water. And even at 72 degrees by Celsius, uh, the MRT water kept, you know, its unique property. Obviously, if it will, uh, temperature will raise to 100 degrees by Celsius to boiling point, so if you're going to boil it for a long period of time, obviously any molecular structure for any water will be destroyed. But if you do it for the short period of time, like uh, maybe five minutes, uh, you know, ten minutes, a uh, certain percent, percentage of the unique molecular structure will be, um, uh, you know, available in this case. And there, um, as I said, some, you know, anecdotal cases are, uh, uh, they prove that uh, it's possible to use emirati water for making tea, make coffee, or even cook, uh, you know, some uh, like soups. Uh, because uh, one of my partners in, uh, uh, for example, in Taiwan, uh, he is the so-called uh, tea ceremony master. And he knows everything about the tea, and uh, he has a huge collection of the tea in his uh, office. And he can tell you um, a lot of stories about how to collect tea, what time. He, so he, he's the expert in the tea. And the first time, the moment he started to use MRT water, he said, well, the tea, the same tea has completely different, very nice specific taste. So it's actually changed the taste of the tea. And since he is an expert in the tea ceremony, I believe that he, you know, uh, he's telling truth. Does it so change the taste words, of the water? Yeah, it's improved the taste of the tea. So it, it, it's much more delicious compared with the tea, the same type of tea prepared with regular water. Um, and uh, um, actually, as I said, the emery tea can treat any type of water-based product. 
And uh, as you know, uh, one of the interesting uh, presentation uh, my uh, partners uh, they are doing in uh, in Asia, for example, like in Singapore, uh, we have a partners and they discovered this by uh, by chance. Uh, they actually treated uh, wine with MRT machine. And as a result, to prove that MRT has a specific effect on molecular structure, uh, they treated uh, very cheap wine with MRT machine. <laughs> it changed its taste. It tastes like a good Fr you know, uh, French wine after treatment. <laughs> Even smell different. Uh, yeah, I I'm true. <laughs> Uh, does it have an, does it, I mean, so it, does it itself have like a, an ORAC score, like, a, or an effect um in terms of a, um, antioxidant, uh, effect, uh, could that be measured in the, on the, on the ORAC, uh, scale? Uh, yeah, it was measured. Yes. Yes. Oh, wow. So it, it, it has, a, a, um, antioxidant properties that, that are measurable. Effect. Exactly, yeah. And actually, it was done by the third party in uh, um, in university um, in Thailand, in uh, Bangkok University. They did this testing, and they actually found that uh, MRT water has a very good uh, antioxidant effect compared with regular water. So obviously, they compare different type of regular waters, yeah. <laughs> Very, very cool. Um, now, and for those who are growing their own vegetables or um, maybe like rose gardens, have you had any experiments uh, using this water on plants and seeing uh, whether it has a, does it produce more flowers or more tomatoes for those plants? Uh, yes, uh, we did this test with, uh, you know, um, um, uh, I mean, it's a certified scientific laboratory, and they conduct a test on plants, different type of plants, like radish, uh, parsley, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And uh, they they found uh, they found out that the MRT water has a, a significant effect on development of the leaves and the roots. So, in other words, it grows faster compared with. Uh, Plants, control plants, uh, which were irrigated with regular water. Oh, that's and the, fascinating. Uh, vegetation, the uh, uh, the uh, you know the uh, plants' uh, growth is uh, in some cases uh, two to three times uh, uh, faster compared with regular water effect, irrigation effect. So farmers would want this machine if, like you said, it can be scaled up. Farmers who irrigate their their uh, crops would would benefit from utilizing uh, this technology. Yeah, definitely. Plus, besides the improvement of the um, uh, growth effect for the plants, as I said, it has effect to actually kill the harmful microorganisms, which can actually... Uh, you know, destroy their, you know, uh, these plants. Amazing. Now, in terms of, um, have you, do you have any studies uh, on how does this water, the structure of water, help to deliver nutrients to the cell? Is there anything that you can share around studies? Maybe, are there any studies that you haven't shared with us yet that, that you have that you'd like to share with us? Um. Uh, we didn't have any specific study regarding the um, uh, delivery of specific nutrition to the cells, but based on this uh, um, discovery regarding the viscosity of water, electromagnetic, electrodynamic characteristic, it actually proves that water has um, has very profound. Uh, it has it's a very good you know delivery system. So. It can go inside the cells three times faster, which means it can go and deliver nutrition three times faster and remove the waste material from the cell three times faster. Amazing. Amazing. Um, so I'm 
very fascinated by your machine. I'm actually really looking for, I'm going to get one. I'm really looking forward to it because it sounds right. so fascinating. And of course, now you have uh, two other things, uh, which I definitely want to touch on. And that is that you designed the Wave Rider. And then you also designed um, this, it's called the Gaia for uh, for cell phones, can, let's talk about first. Let's talk about the Wave Rider. What is this technology, and why did you create it? Uh, well, um, as I said, you know, uh, because of the um, so positive and significant effect, a healing effect of emirati water, um, I was just uh, wondering. I mean, uh, if I create the same type of technology, which is used, the molecular resonance effect technology, uh, how it can uh, affect human body in terms of increase the resistance of the body to different, you know, harsh environment, like, uh, for example, electromagnetic radiation. And uh, um, I managed to develop a different, uh, because the, all the MRT technology is based on specific polymer structure of the polymer material. It's so-called uh, fractal geometry structure. So uh, we developed uh, three different type of uh, uh, polymer material with three different type of fractal geometry structure. Uh, one material is used for MRT water machine, and uh, uh, two other materials is used for wave rider and the emirate shield uh, technology. And uh, as I said, because uh, we have a very uh, serious uh, um, you know, um, uh, scientific research behind this product. Uh, we conducted tests, uh, for example, for Wave Rider with uh, a Namco Laboratory, MET, which is the largest uh, lab in the United States, uh, which basically tests any electro electrical equipment, electrical device uh, developed in the United States. And uh, we conducted tests regarding the effect of the wave rider on these human astrocyte cells, brain cells, when they, these cells were exposed to electromagnetic radiation of the cell phone with wave rider and without wave rider. And uh, we conducted this test at Molecular Diagnostic uh, uh, Laboratory in San Diego. So uh, all this test uh, actually proves that a wave rider technology, which is based on the same effect, it's a generate natural electromagnetic oscillation, so-called noise field. And this type of noise field can reduce negative effect of uh, electromagnetic radiation generated by our, you know, devices like cell phone, computers, uh, TV sets, uh, um, etc. Right. So not only um, cell phones, but we have microwaves. And if someone goes to the tanning booth, um, you know, when you get an x-ray, Wi-Fi, wi -Fi, and we're bathed in Wi-Fi. If you go and look in your phone to, to connect to a Wi-Fi, if you're near an apartment complex, you can see 40 different um, or more Wi-Fi signals that are available. Anytime you look to see what's available, I live out in the country, so there's only, thank God, there's only my uh, router. But back when I lived um, in a in a town with, uh, I lived in an apartment complex, it was, there was well over 40 Wi-Fi signals that were full bars that yep, uh, right. I was being exposed to all the time. And I noticed that whenever there was a power outage, I slept like I the best sleep I ever got was when there was a power outage. And I, I equated it to the fact that there was no EMFs going on. There's no Wi-Fi. There's no electricity going through the wall by my head as I'm sleeping. And I slept like a baby. Uh, I don't know if yeah. you've ever noticed that, that when the power goes out, we get such a, a deep, much deeper sleep. Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's amazing. And uh, the uh, actually the wave rider technology use uh, um, noise field, electromagnetic noise field uh, oscillations, uh, which is in the range of the uh, brain function waves, which is very low, super low, frequency signals, because they can 
actually resonate with our uh, brain function wave, uh, waves. And through this uh, resonance effect, they can help brain to restore normal function. So what kind of effects do people see or what kind of um, s uh, positive symptoms do people experience after using that technology? Uh, well, as uh, uh, um, uh, you know, they usually, number one, they're, uh, uh, you know, sleeping pattern improve dramatically. So they sleep longer and sleep better. Um, another, as I said, another test we conducted on the human brain cells, astrocyte cells. When the cells were exposed to electromagnetic radiation of the cell phone, and uh, the control test was actually compared with the, uh, you know, the group of the um, astrocyte cells when they were exposed to electromagnetic radiation of cellular phones, but with the wave rider machine turned on at the same time. So, and there is a significant difference because what was actually found in molecular diagnostic laboratories that when the astrocyte cells are exposed for a certain periods of time to the electromagnetic radiation of cell phone, their metabolic activity drops dramatically within the first uh, three, four days. So the activity of meta metabolic activity drops, and uh, where at the same time when the uh, astrocyte cells were exposed to same type of electromagnetic radiation, but with wave rider machine, uh, this, uh, there was a significant difference and there was less uh, damaging for metabolic activity of the brain cells, human brain cells. So, so they recover much faster. So, so just so I fully understand this, someone's using a cell phone and they have it to their head and they're doing a regular phone call, maybe it's 10 minutes long, 20 minutes long. Um, what is it, is it the brain and the head and maybe part of the shoulder that those cells had lower metabolic rate for a few days? Yep. Or is it like half the body? Um, what, what, what part of the body is affected when you're holding a cell phone? Like how many, how many feet um, in each direction is affected? Uh, well, you know, the uh, obviously the uh, the area, the closest area to the cellular phone has the most uh, significant negative effect. So it, it means that the the brain cells, their metabolic activity began to slow down, which means that if you continue to use the uh, this uh, you know uh, mobile cellular phone on a regular basis within, you know, a long period of time, it definitely will affect the metabolic activity of the brain cells. And what does that do? What is a lower metabolic... Um, uh, uh, it means that cells, they are not function properly. They slow down their biochemistry. They slow down everything. And uh, the recent research actually proves that how the uh, okay how the electromagnetic field affects uh, you know living cells human body cells for example so uh, it was found that uh, electromag uh, regular microwave signal actually uh, produce negative effect on the cells cells consider these signals uh, something strange for them i mean it's unknown for them because cells were developed during the million years of evolution when there was nothing except the natural earth magnetic field. And this earth magnetic field has so-called noise field oscillation, which means their amplitude is non-coherent. Whereas the signals, man-made uh, devices, they have, so, uh, they have a coherent amplitude signals, which means their amplitude is even and strong and even and uh, whereas the natural earth magnetic field has a very chaotic um, amplitude uh, structure. That's why, you know, we name it a noise field. And 
cells develop their metabolic activity during this million years of evolution when they were actually exposed only to natural earth magnetic field. The man-made devices were developed like maybe 100 years ago, right? Now, uh, as a matter of fact, the intensity of electromagnetic field, man-made field, for the last 100 years increased like a million times compared with what our ancestors had like 150 years ago, which means that cells cannot recognize microwave signal like a natural signal. They consider this signal to be something um, dangerous for them. Uh, for this reason, cells shut down their membrane, shut down their channels. Uh, it means that they try to protect themselves. And this is natural reaction for the living cells, not only, not just for the electromagnetic radiation, but for any chemical poisons. It works the same way. Cells try to protect themselves. They shut down their membrane. And uh, they uh, keep this membrane shut down until the danger, until, for example, if we are talking about the chemical uh, poisons, chemicals, your body has to remove these chemicals out of your body, right? So through, you know, all, all this uh, uh, metabolic process, uh, it's gradually removed the toxins and cells can produce their normal function. In case of electromagnetic radiation, they cannot remove it. We consistently... Uh, exposed to Wi-Fi or we're exposed to electromagnetic radiation, especially in the big cities. So for these reasons, uh, cells continue to keep their membrane shutting down. And as a result, obviously, they cannot remove toxins. Um, I mean, the toxins cannot be removed out of the cells. And uh, the normal uh, metabolic activity is obviously damaged. Yeah, I was going to say uh, what you're describing, if you live in a city, <laughs> especially like if you drive an electric car, you know, or hybrid car, you're basically driving around a giant EMF, you know, field, right? Um, electromagnetic radiation field. Uh, you, you we're in working in buildings where there's um, 40 Wi-Fi signals where go home and maybe we're surrounded by houses. So maybe we're sleeping with 12 Wi-Fi signals. Uh, we have smart TVs, smart dishwashers, smart, you know, all these smart um, um, electronics in the home. Uh, emit a stronger signal than than the, the your your fridge that you owned twenty years ago. That the the, the dumb fridges <laughs> now they have fridges that connect your Wi Fi, and uh, and then of course we bring our cell phone to uh, to bed with us. Maybe we plug it into the charger right by our head, two feet away from a, our head, uh, on the bedside table as we sleep. Uh, is anyone anyone who's listening probably cannot remember the last time they were more than 10 feet away from their cell phone. We carry them in our pockets or some women will put them in their bra when they don't have uh, pockets because they have a, they're wearing a dress. We always have that device on us. It's most likely always on. And, and just because we're not on a phone call, doesn't it still emit the same frequencies that are causing the cells to go like you said almost like go dormant or or lower the, their metabolic rate if, if we're being exposed to if our every cell are you know 37.2 trillion cells in our body are being bathed in uh these frequencies uh all the time then on some level is this lowering our metabolic rate on a on a entire on our whole body and could this put, be one of the reasons why we're seeing a rise in diseases that are related to overtoxicity like cancer uh, and obesity because it's a lower metabolic rate? Uh, yeah, that's right. It's I mean it's the just the uh, the um, uh, step by step effect because see the uh, electromagnetic radiation has an accumulative effect. It's not like, you know, you call the phone and then you die next day, okay? <laughs> Obviously, you know, it goes very slow, and it's very much depend on your age, on your genetics, on your uh, lifestyle. I mean, if you do a lot of exercise, you, you know, you take a lot of 
fresh fruits, vegetables. I mean, you continue to have the healthy life. Obviously, uh, your resistivity of your body will be much better compared with people who are not doing any physical exercise or they already old aging people. Obviously, their metabolic activity will be even lower. And based on this effect, accumulative effect, some people sooner or later, they definitely will have this negative effect of uh, electromagnetic radiation. And uh, in some cases, there were some reports, even from medical doctors, that people who used uh, a lot of uh, mobile or cellular phones for a long period of time just because of their type of job, like, uh, for example, real estate you know, agent or any type of agent, and they had to call on everyday basis. In some cases, they claim they develop a, a cancer, brain cancer. Mm. And uh, one of the examples is this famous guy, I forgot his name. Um, he was a lawyer for, um, anyway, uh, he actually got the brain cancer and he died like several years ago. The lawyer, attorney. Why? Because he was consistently on the cell phone calls. And now they think um, uh, cell phone manufacturers. Wow. I'm thinking about children. So many parents hand their cell phone to their kid. I, wa I go through the grocery store and I see a bunch of five-year-olds sitting in the cart, you know, playing some video game two inches away from their, their skull. And I, and I shiver. I, I, I think to myself, I, n I would never hand a device to my kid because I've, I've seen this research. And um, knowing that we're handing a little radioactive device, basically, to, to a child which has a sm smaller head. So you've got a graphic on your website where it's like, here's an adult. You know, it's going to – the radiation might get halfway through your head. But here's a kid, and they have such a tiny skull – you know, putting a cell phone that close to their head, it's pretty much going, penetrating their entire brain. And, um, and so, you know, we see uh, there's a rise in autism, there's a rise in ADHD, um, there's a rise in autoimmune conditions, and there's even a rise in childhood cancer, uh, since we've really since we've had introduced smartphones, and, and it's, it's, you know, it's, it's kept going up and up as, more and more people own smartphones and I'm not saying there's a direct link. I'm just saying there's, there's definitely these two things are happening at the same time. Um, introducing your machine to children, what kind of results have you seen? Do you have any studies or can you share some anecdotal uh, evidence? Uh, you know, as I said, we, we had a study regarding the effect on the human brain cells and uh, also we conducted tests, uh, so-called uh, SAR tests which means the specific absorption rate. I mean, uh, when we're talking about, for example, like uh, mobile phones, um, every company producing mobile phones, it goes through this SAR test. There is a special laboratory which tests uh, the effect of uh, mobile phone on the, um, on, the, on the brain, human brain. But obviously, you know, they, they're not doing this test on the actually humans, but they use so-called simulation, um, uh, simulation uh, uh, testing machine when actually expose a, a human uh, head, simulated human head, to cell phone radiation and measure the how much electromagnetic radiation was observed absor uh, absorbed by the uh, uh, by the uh, human uh, brain uh, tissue. Uh, when the cell phone was uh, exposed to, you know, this, uh, uh, to this, you know, tissue. So uh, we conducted this test at the same lab, SAR lab, and uh, it's actually, uh, we found that when you use a wave rider machine, the effect of the SAR effect of the cell phone was reduced by 40%. So it means that 40% less absorption of electromagnetic radiation generated by cellular phone by the human brain tissue. Wow. All right, let's get into understanding what this is because um, I can't quite picture it. You, you, so you, 
you first d- discovered and, and created the MRET device that that t- turns water into this special structure that you found that in nature um, has such a positive effect, right? And and then after that, did what was your thought process that led you to then want to create the um, Wave Rider machine? Uh, well, because, as I said, because the first step uh, to, you know, uh, discover this technology was actually the effect of radiation, nuclear radiation on the human bodies, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So after uh, we found that this MRT water can actually help people suffering, suffering from, uh, after the uh, radiation effect, people suffering from radiation defect. Uh, my thought was that, okay, if I try to use same type, not same type, but different type of um, uh, polymer material with this unique um, uh, fractal geometry structure, if I try to use it to protect human body against radiation, and obviously the first step was to test on electromagnetic radiation, because it's a non-ionizing radiation, it's very easy to do, because we are just surrounded by this uh, radiation <laughs> all day long. So, and uh, this was the, uh, my intention, to develop some technology which can um, safely protect human body cells against a uh, harmful effect of electro- electromagnetic radiation, but at the same time doesn't affect uh, does produce any effect on the function of uh, cellular phone and, and any other gadget. Because how it works, it's when the polymer material is exposed to, for example, like Emirate Shield product, it's just a regular piece of our polymer material which can be attached to cellular phone, okay? So when you attach this uh, special fractal geometry structure polymer, piece of the polymer to cellular phone. Obviously, it's exposed to electromagnetic radiation, microwave signal, right, from cellular phone. Mm-hmm. And when it's exposed, this polymer begins to generate its own noise field, uh, low frequency, low intensity noise field. And this noise field actually masks cells from a recognition of the microwave signal. In other words, uh, we actually play trick with the cells. And when cells, uh, when there is a, a microwave signal, uh, when a microwave signal approach the cells, it has a consistent amplitude. Remember I, I explained regarding the amplitude. It has strong, consistent, coherent amplitude. But if we, at the same time, um, apply the noise field, together with microwave signals, this noise field has a different natural structure, natural uh, oscillation structure. And when cells recognize this natural structure, they continue function normally. They don't shut down their membranes, despite the fact that there is still microwave signals around. Fascinating. So this is... So, in other words, we don't reduce intensity of electromagnetic uh, field generated by the gadget. We just change the uh, structure of this electromagnetic field. Got it. And this is something we would apply. It's a device that we apply to our cell phone. Is it if we're but if we're affected by other things, is it would we wear this device or how does that work? Um, yes, usually you know the, you can apply this uh, device to any gadget like Bluetooth or cell phone or your laptop or your iPad. Doesn't matter. But okay, so it has to be on the device yes, that's it creating it to the uh, source of uh, radiation. So in our case, cellular phone or laptop, yeah. Okay, understood. So it wouldn't necessarily negate the um, all the Wi-Fi signals that are coming from around us, would it? Um, no. If we apply this uh, polymer uh, to specific gadgets, so it's actually a uh, reduced negative effect of this um, uh, device. So but if- Wave Rider machine, it's completely different. 
it's actually protect the whole area, um, uh, 30 feet around radius. The whole area is protected. It doesn't matter if you have Wi-Fi or computer or cell phone. You know, you, it, it looks like you're sitting inside the uh, protection cocoon around you. Like a bubble. Like you're creating yeah, a like force a field. Yeah. Okay, because I see these different pictures on your site, like it looks like a tiny thing that you would attach to your cell phone, um, uh, and yeah. then you have this it's larger. A field devices, yeah, it's in. Uh, but Wave Rider is a, it's a, it's actually a device, it's active device, which uh, when you turn on this machine, it creates this noise field all around the whole area in your house, like thirty feet around. Oh, thirty feet around. Yes, it's a 30 feet radius. Got it. And so you could yeah, have one at work sphere, and have one at home. Sphere. In the center of this bubble, in the center of this sphere, is Wave Rider. So if you step in this sphere, you're protected. Got it. And and um, would there be a need for both a Wave Rider and your, the cell phone, um, the chip, the cell phone... Um, polymer that you would apply you what do you do you call it the gaia um uh, no it's uh, you mean the gear so yeah the... because we have uh, we have our partner in um, california it's a gear wellness company and they distribute uh, this uh, emerald shield product okay so what but the one that you created that you put on your cell phone um that's that's totally different from the wave rider machine that creates like a 30 foot radius bubble that helps yes, protect it's a us. Emirates shield device it's a small piece of the polymer with specific uh fractal geometry structure. So you have just to attach this piece of the polymer to any gadget to completely change the structure of electromagnetic field generated by this uh, gadget. Now the M-R-E-T, the machine that makes the two liters of structured water. Uh, um, help me understand, would there be a benefit to make a, a same machine that you would just like put on your body and structure, like, could I just drink regular water and then put this machine on my body and structure all the water within my body? Or um, would that have a better health benefit or is it best to structure the water before I drink it? Well, um, uh, <clears throat> it's a good question, but uh, so far, you know, we conducted most of our, you know, scientific research when actually treat water and then water was consumed uh, by the subject. So I think this is the best and natural way. Right, because I just I've seen so many of those devices out there, like mats that you can lie on that create a specific frequency, and they claim yes, to right, change, right. you know, change your your body on a cellular level on an energetic level and um and i was just wondering if this technology would would uh do that but what but you're saying is that it's best to copy nature which i agree with and 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 drink the water that is structured the way it would be in um in these natural springs that have the best health benefits yeah it's maybe a good uh, idea for the next step for developing something uh, as you mentioned <laughs> in the future <laughs> Very cool. Well, I would love for you to come back on the show when you have more to share because you your background is so extensive. You you've spent so many years um, studying and researching and developing uh, this wonderful technology, and uh, we've only really scratched the surface today in this interview in terms of your experience. Uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the show, and um, listeners. The links to everything uh, that we've talked about today is going to be in the show notes of today's podcast so that you can access uh, the uh, MRET device and the Wave Runner and also um, your books, which I see um, a really a beautiful cover of the book, Molecular Resonance Effect Technology that a Dynamic Effects on Human Physiology, paperback 2008 um, on, on Amazon. The link to that's going to be in the show notes and it's this beautiful picture is that the uh picture of the structured water um when frozen and under the special microscope 
Uh, yes, right. I, I, I can see why he named it Angel Water because it is absolutely beautiful the the way it the way it structures the the water. And, uh, and so that would be a great book to read for those um, health practitioners um, and health enthusiasts that have found this fascinating. I know I have. Um, again, it's been a pleasure having you on the show. Please come back on the show when you've developed uh, more technologies or, or uh, you have more to share around this topic uh, because it's so fascinating and we really need to continue to uncover all the things that we can utilize, you know, technology, we can't just turn away from technology. I know there's, I'm, I'm a big fan of holistic medicine and a big fan of naturopathic medicine. I know there's um, uh, a, a movement of people that only want to go back to nature. And so only, you know, only use herbs, only use food as medicine. And so for those who are only interested in that, they have to consider that technology is this, can, we can utilize technology to heal our body. And that's, that's where you come in with this. This is wonderful that you're, we're, we're putting, we're taking it hand in hand. So we're taking, um, the medicine, the holistic medicine, and we're taking the latest in technology and science to improve our health. And I think we need to consider both. And that's that wonderful marriage. I see that what you're doing is you're helping people heal their body uh, by by structuring the water in which you see is in nature and also by helping to u- utilize technology that helps us to negate the effects of other technologies. So thank you so much for the work you're doing. And I look forward to, to following you and seeing where you go in the future. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure to talk with you about MRT technology. Enjoy what you heard today on your episode of the Learn to Health podcast. Did something move you, inspire you? Did you get great information that's going to change your life? Awesome. That's exactly what I'm here to do is to help you gain your health back. Please turn around and share this. If this is something that's helped you in any way, share this with those you love. Love the Learn True Health podcast and want to support us? Awesome. You can go to takeyoursupplements.com and you can support us that way. You'll get access to amazing supplements that are just really great quality for a great price. And there'll be someone on the other end of the line to help you pick out your supplements that are right for you. That's takeyoursupplements.com or join our membership, learntruehealth.com slash join. That's another great way to support our podcast, support our movement, and you'll be supporting yourself. Gain more information, wonderful videos, wonderful trainings, and you'll also be able to share those with those you love as well. So go to learntruehealth.com slash join. Want something fun for free? Go to learntruehealth.com and right there on the front page, you'll see where you can get our free cookbook. I spent a lot of time making it and it was so much fun. It's really delicious, healthy recipes. And you can also get our seven day doctor course uh, right there. It's seven days of naturopathic videos sent right to your inbox and you can learn from top naturopaths on how to gain health naturally. So that's takeyoursupplements.com for wonderful supplements learnyourhealth.com slash join to join our awesome membership which is only open for a limited time you can get our free healthy cookbook and you can also get for free seven days of wonderful naturopathic videos sent to you just go to learnyourhealth.com and you'll see it right there on the front page thank you so much for being a listener and thank you for sharing and helping others let's spread this information and turn this ripple into a tidal wave